It is my honor and great pleasure to introduce Mr. Borrell, a representative vice president that is going to deliver a keynote speech uh, on the second day in the new function. So we are really honored to have you with us today. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Sorry for being late, but I had to abandon the car and coming walking because uh, the traffic, you know, in this crazy city. I thought the traffic was only crazy in New York and Bombay, but I see that in Brussels it's also difficult. No? Well, uh, thank you for inviting me. I am very happy to participate on your work. It's true, it's my second day in office. Yesterday it was the first one. I had the opportunity of participating in the opening of the Climate Change Conference, the COP25 in Madrid immediately after going to Paris for the morning of the French soldiers killed in, in Mali. And this is my third activity, as you can see. It's a, it's a varied menu. It was a sad day yesterday because uh, the morning of this French soldier was a ceremony that showed us that um, this sort of way of kill defending not only the France security, but also the European securities in countries where to talk about human rights is to talk about uh, something unexisting. Today we are going to talk about it, and I am very happy to have this opportunity because when I went to the hearing, I vowed that human rights would be an important part of the foreign policy of the European Union. And today, when we talk about human rights, you have to talk on the perspective also of the environmental issues. Normally, when we talk about human rights, we think about a dictator who puts people in jail. Uh, and, but now we have to deal with human rights in a broader, in a broader scope. And the consequences of climate change, it's also a threat to human rights all over the world. Because uh, human rights and environmental challenges are closely interlinked and affect people on their fundamental rights all over the world. And not only talking about the indigenous people in the Amazon whose livelihoods are under serious threat, also about it, but uh, extreme weather events all over the world are affecting an increasing number of people globally, and mainly the most vulnerable in society. European citizens are very much aware that one of the biggest challenges we face are climate change, but it's not affecting us from the perspective of human rights. Geopolitically, by the contrary, it's true when they affect the conditions of living of millions of people, talking about Sahel, people who will be obliged to abandon their land because their land is no longer able to produce from an agricultural point of view, they will become migrants and they will come to Europe. And this is a vicious circle that affects them, their human rights, both as people who are obliged to leave their countries and also later as migrants coming to ask asylum. Uh, maybe the idea of uh, asylum seekers by climate reasons is starting to emerge. I am asking for protection, not because at home there is a bloody dictator who will kill me, but just because I cannot live and I have to, to go away in order to look for security. That's why it's so important that the European Commission has started working on this European Green Deal that we will be approving, I hope, on the next weeks. And this will make the European Union a big political agent as a listener as a spender, 
as a provider of investment capital at home and abroad, as a standard setter, in general, as a global actor. And at the upcoming European Council, in a couple of weeks, the heads of state and government should finalize our guidance in order for us, European Union, to set up a long-term strategy on climate change. And this will require a strong engagement from international partners and civil society. International partners, because we are, we Europeans, just eight, nine percent of the CO2 emissions. And even if by miracle tomorrow we stop producing a single kilogram of CO2, the problem would still be the same because there still will be the 92% which are being produced out of the wealthy European countries. And this puts a strong problem of social justice all over the world, global justice, no? How can we ask people that has never seen a bubble, an electric bubble, that their development has to be constrained due to the fact that there is no room in the atmosphere for more CO2 emissions. There is about 1,000 million people who has never seen an electric bubble, not to say about <laughs> refrigerators, heaters, cars, everything that we have at home and we use as part of our way of living. This is going to put a big problem of justice to whom the atmosphere belongs and who is authorized to use it and a storage of CO2. Yes, we are not producing a lot, but in the past we have produced too much. And the problem comes from the fact that in the past we, the affluent part of the world, we have been used this public good, which is the amount of the atmosphere, the amount that the atmosphere is able to stock of these gases. So we have to pursue climate changes inspired in a strong justice basis, and this is why it is very much related with human rights. But we can go closer to real life things and to talk about the people in the civil society that works on the protection of human rights and fight a for a safe, clean, healthy, and sustainable environment. Environmental human rights defenders, they are environmental human rights defenders. I know some of them in my past activities are true champions working on the ground, often in the face of great adversity on personal cost and we should continue to do everything we can in order to protect them and to ensure them that they can be working in a safe and enabled environment, free from obstruction and insecurity. Today, land and natural resources management is one of the most critical challenges the world is facing. Land and natural resources management have a look at deforestation and many other <laughs> phenomena is one of the most critical challenges that we have to face. And that's why we have uh, agreements and we have uh, forest law enforcement governments and trade voluntary partnership in addressing the problem of land rights at national level. And it is very critical. We are doing something to support it all above 40 countries, at least that's what this paper says, in 40 countries, we are spending about 240 million euros to protect the human rights fighters in front of the environment challenges. And when I am not talking just about indigenous people who are in the collective imagination of the Western civilization, the ones who are fighting, being the guardians of the environment. We know them, but they are much 
much more risk. And there are many people who are being involved on these kind of fights, suffering from intimidation, harassment, detention, and even losing their life. And I can say some examples. Recently, in Latin America, one of the most well-known human rights defenders from the environmental side, who was killed in Honduras, uh, Berta Cáceres, maybe some of you have heard about her. I am happy to know that uh, some days ago, a court sentenced four men to 50 years in prison for the murder of Berta. In my previous life, I had to answer many questions in the Spanish Parliament, asking me what are you going to do to protect the family of Berta, what are you going to do in order to ask for justice for the people who killed Berta, which is a good example of how people like her, coming from the ground, from the indigenous population have become defenders of uh, human rights from the point of view of environment. I think this is a new dimension of human rights defending. And what I can tell you, and I don't want to be longer, is that we have to introduce this dimension on the human rights fight. In 2018, we have listed 300, 321 human rights defenders that were targeted and killed for their work, the highest number on record so far. It's quite a big number, huh? 321 human rights defenders from the environmental perspective. More than three quarters of those were just fighting on environmental issues. And since 2015, the European Union has been supporting 30,000 human rights defenders. That's not bad. That's not enough. But to help and to support 30,000 people all over the world, which were engaged on defending human rights from an environmental perspective, I think is something that we should put into value. And we have done that through the European Instrument for Democracy and Human Rights. And I hope that in the new financial perspective, this budgetary line will increase because we really need it because the problems of human rights and environment will go increasing in the next future. I don't want here to, to come here to preach and to say that the European Union is the solution for everything. Uh, I don't want to express my happiness because we do a lot. I prefer to say that we are not doing enough, that we are doing things, but not enough, certainly not. And whatever we do, and whatever we are able to perform on facing this problem, will be much more effective if we work together. If we work, the administrations and the civil society, the civil servants and ordinary people who are engaging through the work of the ONGs all over the world by many ways Enabling, enabling access to information, supporting land governance. We have signed some agreements with more than 40 countries, addressing violations of human rights by companies and corporate entities. And all of you have in mind examples of where and how this happens. It doesn't happen mainly in the European geography. Thanks God, we are overpassed this stage of development. But it happens in many countries with which we have trade agreements. 
And I think that this kind of trade agreements can be used as a powerful tool in order to get an answer from these countries in order to face these problems. How the products has been produced, where the products has been produced, which is the environmental and human rights cost of the things that we consume, more and more it's an answer that has to come from civil society to push the political organizations in order to take care of these issues. If there is not a pressure from the civil society, if there is no pressure from people like you, at the end, on the negotiation table, these kinds of things tend to be forgotten, tend to be taking place of a more important and pressing economic interest. So I know very well when we are negotiating, you have to take into account many different things. And the more power, the more political power is behind one objective, the more you pay attention to it. Others, which are much more important from a human point of view, they don't have a defender behind them. You must to play this role. And that's why the European Union, and in particular, the European Union External Action Service, would be very happy if we can work together and to contribute to a better defense of the human rights defenders on the field of environmental. We are going to have a lot of work because and yesterday in Madrid I listened to a lot of nice speeches, everybody claiming how important it is to fight against climate change and protect the rights of nature. We are in fight against the nature. We have to make peace with nature. That's good. The only thing is that all that has a cost. And someone has to pay it. And one of the most important things that we will have, in the fate, we have to face in the future is who is going to pay for it. I am always saying that for people like me, it's quite easy to think about what's going to happen in the next 20 years and to be worried by the end of the world that will happen 20 years from now. But there are many poor people that cannot afford to be afraid or worried for what is going to happen 20 years from now. They are too much worried about, about the next 20 days in order to ask them to be worried about the end of the world. The end of the month is much more important for them than the end of the year. That's why it's a matter of social justice at a global scale. And I thank you for your engagement and your work in order to make the ecological transition fair. Because if it is not fair, it will not happen. Thank you.